In today's video, I will show you how to solder the electrical components for Flora, my smart self watering plant pot. Let's go! Flora is an open source do-it-yourself project. If you don't know about Flora yet, you may consider watching the introductory video first by following the link in the corner. This tutorial is meant for total beginners and I will try to explain everything in detail. Don't worry, this project makes a good first soldering experience. For the PCB layout, I chose the THT or through-hole technology which is generally the simplest soldering technique but may require some practice. If you feel insecure and don't want to waste your precious flora parts, you can try things out first by soldering some old wires or old junk PCBs. A list of all electrical components required for flora and the files for the custom circuit board can be found in my earlier video, linked in the corner. Of course, you will also need some solder and a soldering iron for this. Personally, I use such a soldering station because it allows me to choose my desired temperature and it has a display for the current temperature so that I can easily see when it's done preheating. But a simple soldering iron like this one with 15 to 30 watts of power should work just as well in this scenario. Many soldering irons and stations come with a variety of interchangeable tips. In our case, I would recommend such a flat, screwdriver shaped tip. For the solder, it's a good idea to use one with an integrated flux core. The flux removes the oxide layer from the metal parts and contributes to a strong connection and a shiny surface of the solder joint. Solder without flux is much more difficult to work with. Other useful items are cutting pliers, a cable stripping tool, a so-called helping hand like this, and solder wick, which I will explain later in this video. All right, now let's start with the actual soldering work. As the first step, we turn on the soldering iron to preheat it. If you have a soldering station, set it to 350 degrees Celsius and wait until the temperature sensor has reached this value too. For the simple soldering iron, you need to guess when the working temperature is reached, but 10 minutes should probably be enough. The position of each component is marked on the circuit board. To keep the parts in place while soldering, it's easiest to begin with the flat ones. Let's start with the diode. Bend the legs in a 90 degree angle and slide them through the holes next to the D1 label on the board. For this part, the right direction is crucial. Therefore, make sure that the small marking on the diode is on the same side as the marking on the circuit board. You can also bend the legs on the back side, so you can lay the board flat on your table for easy soldering. Now take your preheated soldering iron and apply a small amount of solder to the tip. If it doesn't melt, it's either because the temperature is too low or because there is some dirt or rust on the soldering tip. Remember to clean your soldering iron with a wet sponge every now and then. Place the tip so that it touches both the copper pad on the PCB and the leg of the diode to heat them simultaneously. The small solder blob you created on the tip just before is supposed to speed up the heating process by enlarging the contact area. After only 2-3 to three seconds, the metal should be hot enough. Now, add a little more solder to the melting zone close to the tip and then remove the soldering iron after one second. This picture shows what a proper solder joint looks like and explains pretty well what to do. Pause the video here if you'd like. Repeat the same process with the other side of the diode and then you can already cut off the excess legs on the back side. Next up are the five resistors. For each, the position on the circuit board is marked with an R, followed by the individual resistor value, which is either 270 ohm, 
33 kilo ohm or 100 kilo ohm in this case. You can find out the resistor value by checking the color code and using an online tool like this. Do the same with them as you did with the diode. The direction doesn't matter for these parts. After that, repeat the process with the 100 nanofarad capacitor. With a ceramic plate capacitor like the one in the parts list, the direction is irrelevant again. Solder it from the backside this time. For some other capacitor types, you have to make sure that the marked side faces the ground copper pad. Let's continue with the battery cable. This will later be plugged into the connector of the ESP32 microcontroller. Shorten the cable to about 5 cm length and use a cable stripping tool at the ends. If you don't have such a tool, you can use scissors or cutting pliers instead, but that's more complicated and requires a special technique. Leave the cables a little bit longer in case you accidentally cut them off instead of stripping them. Before soldering them to the PCB, make sure the plus and minus cable are on the correct copper pad. The usual color code, red for plus and black or blue for minus, doesn't necessarily apply here, as the alignment of the JST connector on top is not standardized and can vary depending on the manufacturer. An easy way to take that into account is to plug the JST connector into the ESP32 and check which cable is on the marked plus side in this case. The same cable color needs to be soldered on the plus copper pad on the PCB. At this point we take a jump and move on with the water pump which needs to be fitted with a 10 cm cable that has a JST connector on the other side. The plus side of the pump is marked with a small red dot. This is where the red cable has to go. You can insert the strip cable ends through the holes on the pump's contacts and bend them into a hook shape to make soldering easier. A helping hand tool is very useful to hold everything in place. Now back to the PCB which receives its JST connectors for the pump, battery and the water level sensor in the next step. Just like with the battery cable for the ESP32, check the correct orientation of the connectors first. To do so, connect them with the battery, respectively the water pump and make sure the red cable goes on the copper pad marked with the plus in both cases. Be careful not to touch the battery pins to avoid a short circuit. Better don't plug it all the way in. For the water level sensor, the orientation of the JST connector doesn't matter. The connectors have to be soldered from the backside. For ease of use, a good trick is to put all three of them on the PCB, then turn the whole thing over and place it on the table. After that, repeat the same process with the female pin headers. It's very important to solder them in an upright position, so that later the pins of the ESP32 will fit in nicely. Speaking of the ESP32, they are usually delivered without pins soldered on, in order to avoid transport damage. In this case, it makes sense to plug the male pin headers into the female ones of the PCB and then place the microcontroller on top to keep everything in place while soldering. Whew, we are almost done! Please consider giving this video a thumbs up if you like my explanation so far. Next up is the MOSFET, which needs to be soldered in the middle of the circuit board. Make sure the piece of metal on top is on the same side as the marking on the board. Stick it through the holes and carefully bend the MOSFET over while holding its legs in place to create a nice 90 degree angle. Then solder everything and cut off the protruding legs. The switch and the button must of course be placed in such a way that they can be operated from the side. 
The rest should be pretty self-explanatory with all the things you have seen in the past few minutes. A helping hand is useful here again. The last component is the male pin header with three pins. This part is a little difficult to solder in a 90 degree angle, but that's only important for looks in this case. And that's it! Now give each solder joint a final check and make sure they all look like this. In particular, take a close look at the JST connectors, as their pins are quite close together. If you accidentally created a bridge there or anywhere else, you can still rework this spot. In my opinion, the easiest way to remove excess solder is by using such a solder wick. Simply place it on the joint while heating it with a soldering iron and watch the capillary forces suck out the solder. Do you have any additional tips or do you think I forgot something? Then please help other people by sharing your knowledge in the comments. My next video will show you the mechanical assembly of Flora and after that I will explain the program code for the microcontroller. So remember to subscribe to this channel to not miss the release of these videos. Alright guys, that's it for today. Stay tuned and see you next time!